How's it going guys? Welcome to the week three algebra enrichment program at St. Edward High School. Uh, the first two weeks were awesome. You guys did a ton of stuff with linear equations, systems of equations, uh, comparing a lot of things to your businesses or just selling different things. Um, and as we looked at things, comparing them to the real world, uh, we're gonna kind of continue and do that as we go into week three, unit three, which deals a lot with exponents. So what do exponents look like? How can they be used in the real world? Uh, how can we really see them in their equations and kind of compare them to things that we did in the past? Um, and how can you guys actually go through and find different things and find different ways that exponents are actually used in the real world? Because that's kind of the big part of this. You know, if you guys go through and learn something, really being able to connect it to something that interests you, uh, you know, is really a great way for you to go through and learn something, try and figure out how you know, it works and how you're gonna be using it in the future. So looking at specific things with the exponents, what we wanna be able to see is, you know, where are they used in the real world and how do exponent equations in their graphs compare to that of uh, linear equations in their graphs? You know, like does the exponent does something different? If some of you have dealt with exponents in class, that's been, that's awesome. Uh, you notice that they create some type of curve rather than a straight line that those linear equations give us. So we're gonna be looking at a lot of stuff like that. If you haven't seen exponents before, exponents deal with just multiplying. So if you have something like two squared, that just makes it two times two, which is four. If you multiply two by itself three times, that's two to the third, which is eight. Four times is two to the fourth, which is 16. You just kind of look at it every single time, it's just doubling itself when you take two to some power. So it's used a lot because if something's happening and there's some you know, big phenomenon that's occurring and there's a whole lot of things that are happening, um, you know, a lot of things that we'll look at and even get into like social media popularity and things like that. How do these things go viral? Well, exponents and looking at those is kind of a big, big play of that and we're actually gonna go through a problem just like that in just a minute. Hey, but first we need to know a couple of the properties of exponents. Uh, some of the main properties that we deal with uh, specifically look at you know, how we write exponents. If we have b squared, that's b times b. b to the third is b times b times b. b to the zero is equal to one, and I'm actually gonna ask you a question about that in a little bit. If you have b to the m times b to the n, that's equal to b to the m plus n, we call that the multiplication property of exponents. b to the m times n, that comes from b to the m to the nth power, we call that the power property of exponents. I like to call it the distributive property of exponents. Uh, if you have two terms inside the parentheses, all you do is you distribute that n into both of them and make it b to the n times c to the n. If you have a negative exponent, well, what does that do? That actually puts it in the denominator, and we'll talk about why that also occurs, and that kind of goes along with the b to the zero. And then if you have a fraction or a whole bunch of different ways that you can write it, we're gonna look at a lot of those. Okay, so just kind of getting started off and looking at how exponents are written um, and kind of understanding that a little bit. And we're first going to look at uh, three different examples. The three main properties that we deal with are the multiplication property of exponents, the division property of exponents, and the power property of exponents. So the first one is this multiplication property of exponents. And how I like to look at that is if you have something like 2 to the fifth power times 3 to the, oh, sorry, times two to the third power. All you do is you just add those exponents together. You keep the same base and you do five plus three, which is equal to eight. So the multiplication property of exponents looks at when you multiply two things with the same base. Now, if it looks something a little bit different, say if you have two x to the third times three x to the fifth, well now we're just multiplying. So you do two times three right here, which is six and then x to the third times x to the fifth is x to the eighth. So this is one way that we actually go through and uh, simplify those fractions, or those fractions, those exponents, and by specifically looking at whether they have coefficients or they have same bases. If they have the same base, you can add their exponents together. Similar to the multiplication property of exponents, the division property of exponents takes those same thing. If you have x to the eighth over x to the sixth, you just subtract them. It should be x to the eight minus six, which is x squared. Or if you have values like 10x to the third over five x, which is really five x to the first, you just divide the coefficients, 10 divided by five, which is two, and then subtract the exponents, just like what we did up here. Remember, there's really a one there, which would make it x squared. 
And then the last one that we look at is the power property of exponents, or I like to call it the distributed property of exponents. It's when you deal with parentheses within it. If you have x to the fifth to the third power, whenever you draw a line in math, remember that means to multiply, so you just take that and you make it x to the 15th power. If you have something on the inside, like a coefficient, you have 2x to the third to the eighth power, Remember, this 2 has its own exponent. It has an exponent of 1. So we're actually distributing this 8 into both of the 1 and the 3, and you get 2 to the 8th times x to the 24th. Because remember, when you distribute, you multiply it in. Okay? And if you would know what 2 to the 8th is, that would just be 2 times 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 2, okay? which can actually get you a real number. So that's just kind of a real quick introduction to those. Um, I'll send a video as well, as well for these three. If, it, if you haven't done those yet in class, they can be something that can help you out as we go through and answer some of the questions specifically that we'll be looking at. And so the first question that I'm going to pose is, how can you possibly become TikTok famous? So you create an awesome video. You're like, you know, a lot of people, you know, they're, you know, how, are, are they going to like it? How, am I, how can this possibly happen? Well, to think about it, well, what if one person watches your video, say it's one of your best friends, and that one person goes and tells 10 people. Well, now you have 11 people that have watched it, but now 10 people, what if those 10 people go tell 10 more people each? So you got 10 people, and now you have 10 more people each, so that's 100 plus that 10 plus that one, and I want you to keep going and try thinking how, if that happened every day, some, like they told someone else the next day, how long or how many turns would it take for you to just have 1 million views. It's actually a little bit lower than you might actually think right off the bat how long it would take to just get a million views. Um, and all that deals with exponents. So what I want you to do tonight, and we'll talk about it tomorrow in, uh, in, in our Google meeting, is to actually go through and answer that question. Now I'll share with you these slides and everything so that you can go through and look at it. Uh, but just, you know, how long will it take you to become TikTok famous if that goes through and happens? And the second question, which I want you to think about, which we'll be answering tomorrow, is why is anything to the zero power equal to one? So if you take anything to the zero power, seven to the zero, nine to the zero, eight to the zero, negative 43 to the zero, x to the zero, anything to the zero power, it's equal to one. I want you to actually give me a reason why. Now, a lot of people just say, oh, because my teacher told me. Well, I want you to actually figure out, you know, like why is this equal to one? There's a really actually easy way to go through and look at it. Um, but see if you can actually come up with that um, and see why something is equal to one. You can either try thinking of it yourself, which is what I would recommend, or you can do a little bit of research. And when we meet tomorrow, we'll see if, uh, what kind of type of answers you guys got. Other than that, that's all I have. I hope you guys have a great day. Um, this is week three, day one. So we have this whole week. I'll send out and give you guys a little project that we'll be doing starting on Wednesday uh, that you guys can get and turn into me on Friday, just like you guys did the first two weeks. All those submissions that you guys got to me were awesome. Um, I know that there's a couple people that were still actually um, finishing those up. They might have forgot about them a little bit, but if you can just send me those, I kind of have a good little database uh, that I'll send out to everyone at the end of the year so you can really see everything that you've done throughout the whole year. All right, other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and go Eagles.